This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You're on the clock with Erin Green on this Thursday, the 7th of July, 2022. And it is a culture Thursday. That song was called Goombe by George Simonet. It's a culture Thursday. We're playing music this morning. We're going to play the How Bahamian Are You game with my guest who's going to introduce themselves in a moment. Uh, because we're talking about... A very, very special place. There are very, some very special places in the Bahamas, right? Justice Gardens is one of the most special places. They say, Inagua is the best kept secret in the Bahamas. Then we learned that Cat Island, Watlands Island, San Salvador, Watlands Key, San Salvador is the best kept secret in the Bahamas. Then I come to remind you today that Justice Gardens is the best kept secret in the Bahamas. And the only way, there's only two ways you could get to Justice Gardens right now. The first way is through Cable Bahamas. But look here, the visa for that is just, whew. The second way is through the Dundas. The only way to get to Justice, you got to start off at the Dundas, then you got to catch the shuttle to South Beach, to, to, to where the ferries go. I get, I'm telling the secret, but you, you got to start at the Dundas. You can't get to Justice Gardens without the Dundas. And my guest this morning is going to talk to us a bit today about <coughs> the Dundas and how we could save the Dundas. And I say how, how we must Correct. save the Dundas. Well, let's start here, my guest. Please introduce yourself for the people. Good morning, good morning, Bahamas. I am Dolores, alias Red Archer, Adelie. Presently, the manager at the Dundas Theater on Markey Street. 103 Markey Street is where we are located. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Awesome. So I got a little housekeeping. We talk just a tiny touch of politics. It ain't going to last long. It ain't going to last long at all. Okay, so first of all, today, as a part of the independence celebrations, is the Babe Ruth Caribbean Championship opening Sony. That's the Babe Ruth Caribbean Championship opening ceremony at 7 p.m. at the National Stadium. That's at uh, QE Sports Complex. Now, for a second, I was going to ask, what are we doing with a Babe Ruth Caribbean Championship opening ceremony? Then I remember that, like Tom Brady, Babe Ruth is probably a Bahamian, too. He is probably the boy carry. How many home runs he hit? 185,000 home runs. He have to be a Bahamian, too. But the history... Uh, or the relationship between the Bahamas and baseball, right, is broad, is wide, it's complex. It, 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 it then brings us into our relationship with the U.S. and then our relationship with Cuba and other countries in the region and other countries that are now a part of the U.S. So I could take a set, step back and uh, just remember that Babe Ruth is probably a Bahamian anyway. We know going Get upset. Second thing I want to remind you is that the Acklands Island Cascarilla Heritage Festival begins to the 7th through the 11th of July. You still have time to get there. Don't go on the mailboat. I hear it'll take you eight days to get to Acklands on the mailboat. But see if you could get on a plane and get down there and have some fun. Also, remember, tomorrow is National Flag Day. 
wear your Bahamian flag colors. And if you ain't got no Bahamian flag colors, then wear one t-shirt that have a Bahamian word on it, some Bahamian culture on it. So I got one shirt for tomorrow uh, from the brief campaign with two <coughs> beautiful ugly groupers on it. The most beautifulest ugly groupers I have ever seen. I think I may wear that tomorrow with some other flag paraphernalia. Okay, just a quick rundown on some news things. Listen, there's a story in today's paper. The bottom of the fold of the Guardian, Davis. Colby Davis didn't strike police officer. Now, I just want to say quickly, leave the semantics to high school people. I see that you all like to use this word struck. It's, it's placed prominently in all your commentary about this incident. We are less concerned <coughs> with whether she struck him in the legal sense of the word that you trying to put on the table, because I don't even think that's the legal sense of the word. Because see, here's a more important question. Did Minister Colby Davis openly defy or ignore the order of a police officer? That's the question. We don't care if she got struck, if he got struck, he didn't get struck. If the car touched him, the car didn't touch him. If the tire rub his shoes and scuff it, <clears throat> because all of those constitute an assault and battery, right? It don't matter if the car was moving at 17 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour. All of that constitutes an act. The question is, did she defy or ignore the order of a police officer? Did her vehicle touch the officer <clears throat> after she ignored his instructions, since we're going to insist that she didn't strike him like people that strike their children in the mouth. Or old dusty men that strike their bigoty lovers in the face. Right? Not like that. And the last question I want to ask on that is, are, are we suggesting here that MPs and cabinet ministers are not subject to RBPF authority? Is that what's happening here? Are we attempting to solidify the idea that there's a, another class of people in this place? Because you strike young, poor, dirty, ignorant, or inarticulate <clears throat> young men and women for less. In fact, y'all let a priest body slam a young girl on the beach and ain't say nothing. I just hope that politicians in the political class would defend ordinary Bahamians with the same energy that they defend themselves and their colleagues. Also, dear former Prime Minister Hubert Minnis, let me just say I know, I know how it feels to think that you are somebody and then to be reminded that by those around you that despite what the Constitution says, <clears throat> despite what the laws say, that at any moment in time, they could tell you that you is nobody. I sit with you in solidarity at the idea that somebody thought that they could just, on their own whim, decide not to send you, a former prime minister, an invitation for a state event. I mean, you say you were not invited to the Commission of Police handover event. I feel that. It feels similar. I have a similar experience when the police came to my house and told me that um, but Telco told them they didn't have to investigate the threat. You know, it, it's sort of similar. Because now me and you, we ain't nobody. We're just regular people. But, I mean, you're still in the house, so you're still a little... You're still like a two-meat status. You got two meats. Me? Yeah. I've been trying to send this raccoon in the bush off to medical school for so long so I could get some health care. But we're not going to talk about that today. Today we're talking about culture. Oh, and we're also talking about culture because the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture's summer program, summer camp program has begun. It is open and free of charge. Listen, send them by mail, send them by boat, send them in wheelchair, send them in suit coat, just send them to the camp. Let's find a way to do it, and let's ask businesses, business owners in the communities where these camps are placed to donate masks, donate hand sanitizers, along with other things that the camps regularly 
need. Please, let's do that. A camping system, Methodist Youth Summer Camp Save My Life, Anglican Youth Summer Camp Save My Life, Ministry of Youth Sports Culture Summer Program Save My Life. Let's make sure we can save some other lives with those programs. All right, good morning, Reds. How are you? I'm so glad I ain't coming from no politics. I yeah, no, 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 no. I only had to throw that out there. But you come in. <laughs> I got something different off for you today. Today, we, it's Culture Thursday, and I want to ask the people, right, if there's one form of music that you think is like the quintessential, that means like that's all of us, wrap up. We could wrap up everybody in one style of music, right? Would it be Goombe? Now, you see, I opened up the show with Goombe uh, by George Simonet. And I think Goombe era is my most favorite <clears throat> era right now. Now, Avi could be holding down the Rake and Scrape Center all by himself. This may have to have 175 albums, Oy. 200 hits. I mean, Avi's just prolific at this point. He's like a KB, he's like a Phil Stubbs, he's like a Ronnie mm -hmm. Butler. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what if it is that these guys are as prolific as they are simply because they were able to get their music online, and that's it? Right? Like the difference between, <clears throat> boy, look here, if I could remember your name, the guy who's a handyman that writes this, this is a classic Reds, he wrote a song about the uh, pandemic and the lock lockdowns, right? I have it on a playlist oh, somewhere, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I believe he even worked for Ministry of Wakes or something, man. Yeah, he's be on the, on the iPod, on the, on, the, on the Facebook page. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's always creating something. Yeah, look here. Uh, so I want to ask the audience today, what music style, as we approach independence, would you say is the form, the genre that wraps us all up? Is it gumbe? Is it rake and scrape? Is it junkanoo? Is it folk? Right? Because we got folk. Um, from my guy Wendell Stewart all the way down to Tony McKay, who is also a folk artist, mm -hmm. or is it funk disco? Because you got Tony McKay all the way up to T Connection, right? Um, that's making funk disco music. So that's for the audience. But as we begin the discussion, Reds Archer. Let's talk because we got to save okay. the guns. Okay, 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 okay. Tell all us right. what's happening. All right. Well, first of all, Bahamian song, you've heard Aaron introduction to politics, to culture. And so now I am so happy and honored to be here this morning to represent the aspect of culture. And presently, the Dundas Theater, which has been in inception from 1940 as a civic organization for domestic persons, and then went on to 1970 to become a theater for the Bahamian people. And presently, during that period of time, we have, I would think, developed so many behaviors, become so many things in the hotel industry, which was the main thrust of our tourist economy at that time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the persons who would have been involved, governor's wives, wives would have been Runfley, Lord Dundas, and they were the ones who would have been so much interested in the theater movement of the country. I had a document that I found years ago and, and realized that it automatically started in what is the corner? Hospital Lane, Woodcock Primary School. Okay, first of all, you all Fort Hill people <laughs> cannot own everything. Bain Town again. <laughs> yes. Also, Hospital Lane. Yes. Hospital yeah. Lane was where the Dundas Civic Center, I understand, started and was created as the, th as the civic center for the, for the hotel workers and the domestic training and then onto the Markey Street property. Okay. And that's very interesting for us to know. Yeah, the civic center. See, because one of the questions I have about when we get back into this music culture thing, right? The, a lot of the songs that I have on my list today come from like 1951 to 1959, right? There's a, an album called Gombe, mm -hmm. the Artist of the Bahamas, 1951, 1959. And then I thought to myself, is Gombe the music of tourism? Because a lot of the songs I have on this list are like uh, Island Woman and... Uh, Oh, which I have one by Eloise Trio. It didn't make it. There we go. Island Woman. There was another one from her, Come to the Caribbean, Nassau Merengue. A lot of those songs of their era felt like they were more focused on tourism, tourism precisely, than on the, the experience and, right? of the Bahamians. Mm -hmm. But at mm -hmm. the same time, there's a lot of Bahamian experience woven into Enter, there. Right. And so, but, but the Dundas started as a space not for tourism, but for the, the workers. That's right. 
All right, I, I can read a little small part yeah, where yeah, it yeah. says, uh, we call it the history of the Dundas Center for the Performing Arts. Lady, the Honorable Mistress Charles Dundas founded the Nassau Improvement Association in May 1930. And its original purposes was to rebuild areas over the hill, which had been devastated by the hurricane of 1929. Secondly, to provide a training ground for young Bahamians in the area to develop marketable domestic, thirdly, to develop a job registry to accommodate them, which was located in the Woodcock Primary School on Hospital Lane. That's where they leased the property. And they started to train them there. Mm -hmm. And so that was the beginning of, of the domestic skill um, work line, job training individual persons. What we have another job training on Glaston Road. Yeah. See how it revolves. I will say look at the full circle at because the, the spot improv comedy troupe, I will continue, continue to sell it as not just an entertainment center, mm -hmm. right? But it is a skills building space where we teach people how to imagine collectively mm -hmm. and to cause other people to imagine collectively, right? And if, if a politician don't need that, if an independent Bahamian oh. don't need that, if a Bahamian domestic or tourism worker don't need that, then what do they need? Right. right. Wow, full cycle. Yes. Plus, we have to save the Dundas yes. because I got a whole couple months of programming for the 50th liberation yes. that have to take we place there yes. Yes. as well. Yeah, so basically what I'm trying to say is that we have to start somewhere. Yeah. And they've started that, and then they went into the theater in 1970. Wow. I understand there's another story about that where E. Clement Bethel and Meta Kamabach, yeah. or Meta Kamabach were driving around and went into that space and said, okay, the National Arts Festival is being... I'm implemented by the Ministry of Sports or Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture at that time, yeah. and they did that space to create another space for the for the theater and the arts. So everything again has a base. Yeah, the Dundas right yes. there on Mackey Street. Yes, and that's where that started again. So that was a development for the Bahamian people again by other persons who saw the future. Yeah. Of the drama and the theater and right. the art, which is music, dance, and theater. Right. And we, we think of the Dundas as the main building, yes, right? Yes, yes. It's not a national theater, I'm, I'm right. told. Right. Not okay. yet. Not yet. But it captures the national experience. Yes. And yes. so much of our culture has passed through, through there yes. and grown in that of space, course. right? And developed a lot of persons. Yeah, without a doubt. That's right. Like, I wouldn't be here. All right. Yeah, if you... If you could feel the Dundas stage shaking under your, your foot, right? I mean, that's really your foot shaking. As I tell the people, it wasn't me shaking. <laughs> Must be earthquake. I wasn't nervous. But if you could feel that shaking and still go on and perform, you know, that, yes. that builds you. Yes. It's a part of you, though. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm basically from the theater world, from my cousin Winston Saunders' mother. Uh -huh. uh, she trained me when I was like 11, 12. So I'm saying I have a passion for the, for the theater. Absolutely. And that's why we're there doing more voluntary work than paid work. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's where we got to get in. See, we got to grow the culture of appreciation for what happens at the Dundas. And this is what I was saying. We, we think of it as that main building. We know now that the Dundas Performing Arts Center has expanded beyond the main building. And there are lots of other spaces to create in other ways yes. on the building. Yes. Well, there's a, 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 a black box. Which was created in 2014. Right, yes. which is for small, intimate. Eight. And uh, then there's the main stage. And then there is an unimagined space, right? That's, we, That's, we have two unimaginable spaces to create. Yeah. We've seen the potential of the food court right. in, the, in the foreground, in the, in the front of the building. But I also see the potential of using all of that outdoor space for my comedy festival for 50th independence celebrations, among other things that I'm sure other people like Catelyn and friends. Yes, we hope and, to put, uh, from, put, put our amphitheater in his name. Mm -hmm. And That's my cousins where. from Grand Bahama, the playwrights, right? And, and my, I don't know. I would like to. Anyway, Sawyer Boy, I can call you for dinner tonight. But ah, Sawyer ah, Boy ah. and Das Quay, right? And, and, and right. Cindy Mullings and all the stand-up comedians, right? There's more than just the space we traditionally know. There's still lots of space open to grow oh, yes, out there. Yes. And we got to save this place. Yes, and you must. Presently, the only reason why we're not open now mm -hmm. is because of our air-conditioned system, which is like over 40, 40 years old, and it's now completely, you know, obsolete. It's kaput. Definitely so I just, how many how many AC units we need to stick in the wall? Eight. Not wall. It's not even wall. It's the, the, what they call them. Um, what, the, what is the term they use? Cell? 
uh, yeah, 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 the eight unit. Yeah, it's not the ductless anymore. No, it's this the is same. a new energy saving system that they want to implement, which could right. last another thirty five years. So tell me, I want to contribute. Uh, my sea grapes haven't come through yet. Okay. Gnep is early. On the guava, right? No, guava, guava <laughs> is a, a billion dollar industry. If you could listen, if you could find guava in your Providence, you a lucky person because the guava duff vendors, uh-huh. they have an industry and they got their supplies on lock. Mm-hmm. But what I do have, my friend, is uh-huh. gooseberry. Oh dear. I have gooseberry. Sour. And I got. Oh. See the gooseberry. <laughs> I never like them. But did you know if you cook a gooseberry and add sugar, it turns pink? I would think so because of that color and the sugar. And I'm going to tell you all this. Uh, this is the last uh-huh. secret I can give away on the radio. <laughs> red Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah, the tropical punch running. No, no, they're just red. <laughs> they got no flavor. That's called gooseberry. Okay. And if your children love that red Kool-Aid and you need to recreate that experience without giving them that thing called Kool-Aid, Yo, you're going to get that gooseberry. Mm. You're going to boil it like you're making jam, but you're going to stop the process okay. long before. It gets hard. You, the, okay. the liquid disappear. You're yeah. going to capture that water. You're going to get a cheesecloth, and you're going to strain squeeze. it. Yeah, you're going to stretch it. Mm. All that, you mad at your boss, you're mm. going to push gooseberry. <laughs> your children make you want to pinch them, push gooseberry. Energy. Yeah. And then you're going to capture that water and you're going to make a lemonade with Excellent. it. Excellent. Right? And that's a natural... Well, I believe the same with, with tamarind. You soak yeah. tamarind and, and get the tamarind, the tamarind drink. So right. there's a lot of things we can do, which we used to do when we were young, and use them as the, the right. vitamin C's in your summer programs. Right. And I don't know if people can make the connection. The Dundas, the creative space, it's like a well that you could tap into, right? It's like a... a, a because we don't know about this. I like it's like a rechargeable battery, okay. you know, like a, a functioning electricity company, and but you could tap into it without even knowing that you're tapping into it, and so you could not ever have gone to the Dundas but still be influenced by the creativity that flows from that place. The people when I tell them I have commercials. For my products, right? And they hear the committee be like, oh, that's a professional commercial. Mm-hmm. And I tell them I come from, from the, a professional yes, creative space. That's right. That's right. You know? Second to none in the, in the world. All right. So my radar. how can we support this fundraiser? Okay. Presently now, like I said, we are now embarking on an appeal mainly only for the air conditioning because once that is done and installed, we can now open and be more self-sufficient again. Mm-hmm. But our goal is so much, much more than $154,000. Yes. It's close to like nearly $2 million to get all the things we've discussed. Mm-hmm. The new buildings, the amphitheater, the training center, the box office, the development of the land for the out space, for the out space for it to be green space. Mm-hmm. As you talked about the, the park, the food park, sitting in, in a young company that mm-hmm. came to us. Mm-hmm. We had the idea before they even came, but we embark and partner with them, which didn't last, which didn't work out to mm-hmm. their disadvantage. And to us, mm-hmm. because like I said, the Dundas is much more than just a building and grounds. It's mm-hmm. a family orientated space. Yeah. Once you become a part of the Dundas, you feel like you've been home yeah. and you never want to leave home. Absolutely. It's Whenever great. a show happens, you shouldn't, you know what it is when you come to a show, Aaron. Yeah. You don't just run out of the place. You hang around, you talk, and you just be so happy and content. Whoa, that over. The next one ready, get back on the stage again. And, and for those who are sort of, I, ontologically American and sort of not consumed, but deeply entrenched in American and global North culture, right? You, you won't feel like you are among movie stars. Celebrities, you, we right? are behaving celebrities. You come out to an event. And right. when you right. When you've experienced the quality of the performance, then you clamor to meet That's these right. people you and, and you express wait on the patio for them, right? You yeah. wait on the patio for that receiving I've line, been, eh? I've been in <laughs> to tell my own cast members... <laughs> Out in the front, how much I enjoyed either what I did with them or what I watched them do. That's right. The the recipients who receive what we give to them, they Mm -hmm. are so thankful. And they always give us that gratification to say like, oh, you guys are the best. I say, yeah, but you got to put your money where your mode is. And that's why I made a day to ask. Wanted persons in your phone now? Yes, child. And when police want to find anybody quick, quick, after something happened, they can send pictures direct to your phone. Go to Google Play or App Store and search for Crack Crime Bahamas. Then pick install and we'll go straight to your phone. Bahamas, so you can call and nobody knows you. Call directly to Miami and give the information without giving your name or anything about you. I tried the other day and when I hear Junior and his boys talking about where they hide 
those guns, I walk quick, quick round the corner and call that number. Call 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. devices are killing pedestrians as there have been nearly 6,000 deaths and over 11 injuries as a result of texting and walking. Don't make your last breath. Brought to you by UB Radio in conjunction with Guardian Radio 96.9. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Now don't want no pizza rice, no coconut oil. Now me don't want no pizza rice, no coconut oil. Maybe don't want no peas, no rice. Maybe don't want no coconut oil. Just the ball of brandy handy all the time. Maybe don't drink no gin. Well, look here. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 <laughs> FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. You're on the clock with Aaron Green and Reds Archer. From the Dundas, and I just have to start the segment where me don't want no brandy. Get the piece of rice <laughs> and the coconut oil. He's just talking about Corinne Mitchell. And so to start off the segment, I got a quick question from the How Bahamian Are You game, Reds. Avocado or pickled beets? Oh. Now, pause, think carefully. You, oh. you, can get kick, you can get kick out your generation if you don't answer right. Boy, that's a something. Because I grew up on vegetables. But I like avocado pear, but boy, our ma could have make a pickled beets with them onion and spice and vinegar and a dash of sugar. Listen, I almost divorced boy. my mother because she thought she was from Freeport and put the mayonnaise spoon inside the pickled beets I make from scratch. <laughs> Dear Grand Bahama people, why you always put mayo in everything? Boy. But don't we're supposed to have mayo in it. We're not going to kick you off the island. I say, and you're still Bahamian. We just want to know why you do it. So which one you choose? Pear? Uh, pear and bread, child. I grew up on pear and bread. I'm sorry. Pear. Now, I, I, pear was such a delicacy. You make a whole sandwich with a piece of pear. Yeah, you could have pear. a, maybe if you're lucky, you could have a slice of pear on the side of your meal. A whole pear sandwich? Man, you had yard. We had every food in it. Remember, was growing up. Quava. Cherry. I got another quick one for you. Almond. Hog plum or scarlet plum? <laughs> oh, Lord. Man, that's, a, that's a challenge. I love the scarlet, but it's too, too much, too much seed. But the, see, too big. Yeah, too, too much seed, but it's sweet. Y'all got one tree, I think. Eh? You ate off of the hog plum tree in Corinne Mitchell, yard. Yeah? <laughs> and that was the hog plum. <laughs> Listen, this hog plum tree feed all of the Fort Hill. What type of oh magic God. Jesus five fish <laughs> and two loaves tree is this? Shall I tell you? I tell you, boy, you had all them things in the yard. No wonder y'all... Yeah, we had no gold in the summer, child. We didn't have no gold. We just have vitamin C, pure organic vitamin C for the summer. Absolutely. And you didn't have to run home. You could be in the bush oh, cracking joke day. and having fun. Okay, I got a couple of texts here. A text says, uh, great show as usual. Um, and they said to ask you, I asked you, scarlet plum or hog plum, lemonade or limeade? Lemon. You make your lemonade with lemons or you make it with limes? No, well, the lime is the green one and lemon yeah. is the yellow one. But, you know, the lime tree is turned yellow, you know, so they, you know... Right, it's the about lime, the... The real native lime. Boy, nothing like a key lime lemonade, you know, eh? Yeah, the real oh, one. Oh, Persian. And you had them trees oh. in the yard, too. You wait till they turn yellow to pick them, not green. Now, traditional lemonade or sour orange aid, Reds? That's mixture, man. That's a mixture. So, that's, look here, yeah, sour, sour orange, orange aid different. is the best. That's a different, that's a mixture. That is the best. If you are not lucky enough to... Run out in your yard and, as pick, a, and, and pick one tongue. and make yeah, make a little bit of switching. You fish and do all that. You always have everything in your yard. I tell you, I know you all going all these bombillions for now. They to breed mosquitoes. <laughs> I no, I know that. why. I can tell you exactly why they. <laughs> I can tell you exactly why there's a proliferation of bromeliads. First of all, they farming food. They are uh, drought resistant. I know they right? don't, so don't, you care. don't care. You don't have to water them. No care. Uh, they don't like children hanging out in their backyard. So they breed mosquitoes no in care. it. 
you don't like pot cake in your yard, put down a bunch of bromeliad. They, they only can try it once. They can get hurt twice. And uh, if you have plenty of teeth and people who's run through your yard, bromeliad it up. And that's what bromeliad is for. But it's also a famine food. And uh, they're out of the thousands of varieties of bromeliads, there are only a few that are inedible. Okay. Right? And then there are a bunch that, in the case of a famine, a real famine, people. You have something to, de- um, yeah, to you have survive something on. Yeah. You could eat. I don't think that's a behemoth reason for why they have them, though. No, you don't Ooh. think so? Why they you want to say they will have a pretty yard. That's it. it Nothing else. I, but it got to be Bahamian because they're so spiky. How can it be pretty? They're so <laughs> spiky. They okay. have different colors and different species, so you know. So, but listen, before yeah. we run out of time, uh, let's get back to the Dundas okay. and this fundraising okay. effort. Okay, all right. Let's talk about uh, this this initial effort, and let's mm-hmm. talk about the money, and again, what the money is going to be used for. Okay, like I said, presently we are now only soliciting money, presently now, to open, which is for the air condition system. Okay. And that amount presently, not even a total amount, it's just an estimate of $154,000. Okay. Which presently, we've had some donors already, up to, we up to about $50,000 now, which is so appreciative. I thank those who've already given. I thank those who are about to give. Mm-hmm. And for those who can even solicit much more, we would appreciate it very much. And the deposit account is at the Dundas, Royal Bank 05745. One one eight, one one seven one. You can either transfer online, or you can deposit it, or you can write us a check, and you can call my number, which is eight one five, eight two five eight, to collect your checks or your cash, which I will be able to give you a receipt for for any monies handled. And I want you to be um, very secure in knowing whatever money you donate to the Dunders, it will be earmarked specifically to get us started. If there's any surplus, we have other things pending to be done, such as renovations of the bathrooms and, you know, things just to upkeep the building, the new mm-hmm. roof. So don't be hesitant in saying that I'm only earmarking right. for the and, air condition. And, and ultimately, in the long-term fundraising goal, what I'm hoping we see is a uh, a private-private partnership with the installation of solar and maintenance of solar, right? So you partner well, with that's somebody. Right, right, to make sure that you give it, that, that's economizing the whole space right. for the future. And then a security plan. We need to, and, and it's unfortunate that a space like that cannot be so open where children could just walk in and walk out. But unfortunately, you guys have experienced too many instances of break theft in, that's right, and break in of the property for, for, to allow that yeah, to happen. So yeah. we need an investment. They're fencing companies. Well, that wall needs to be done rather than the fence right. because they keep tearing down the fence. We've done yeah. the fence, and that is not even feasible anymore. No, no. Who, whoever thief the Oban file, they have it around a fence. And that's the fence we can put up around. I want that one. No, no. no. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Me. Wrong no, joke, sir. wrong joke, yeah, wrong joke. Us. Wrong no. joke. But without a doubt, what we need yes. is... A an ongoing, um, an ongoing yeah. fundraising. Now, here's another know? thing: we got rising sea levels, right? We got rising sea levels in the water. You know that, right? Yeah. So we need to p- possibly elevate some you know of the water? structures. You know that in the back there, you just give yeah. the dressing room. We got walking water. Yeah, I mean, I I used to pretend like it was a pool. <laughs> and some people have red carpet, and I got cold <gasps> Jesus, carpet. Child, walk out you. to my car. So many things need to be done. So we just appealing to the baby people to try and understand that it's your theater. Yeah. You know, it was given to us. It was, you know, it was more or less um, entrusted to the Bahamian people. So if you don't take care of it, who can? Yeah. We only could appeal to the government to consider us now because mm-hmm. we're now in an orange economy. Absolutely. So I think this is the time now for the government to come forward if they so desire yeah. to put us in a line item at some point, whether it's in tourism or Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. Dear House of Parliament, don't, don't crack the jokes in the House of Parliament. Come to the Dundas to hear talented young Bahamians perform these jokes on your behalf. And if you come, we wouldn't tell as many jokes about you. <laughs> we will tell jokes with you. You see yourself on stage. That's all it is. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, somebody said, cold slaw with raisins or without raisins? <laughs> Dolores, ra- raisins or without uh, raisins? I like raisins, so I don't have no problem with it now being modernized. But the old time way was without the raisins, sweetie. That's about to say you. You cause me. I almost get listen. I almost get kicked out of a family dinner. No, I can imagine because I said raisins. I used to date. Yeah. You know. Anyway. New time now. You're yeah, new yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. You're all and gourmet now. Yeah, no, 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 no. And dear people, okay. You eat sushi. You a big sushi fan? No, sir. Don't like fresh. Okay, this ain't for you. Enough for that. Whoever putting ripe plantain in sushi, big thick chunks of ripe plantain. 
I will call customs and immigration Ooh. on you. I, I will call them. The, the texter say he should call immigration on you if you say <laughs> raisins in the court's law, Dolores. Okay. Almost out of time. I, I don't know if my producer... I'm so sorry, guys, today. Be good? What? Okay, let's play. Start with Delborn Johnson, bullfrog dress and soldier's clothes. I want to see something. <laughs> and then, see, a few weeks ago, I had a trivia, right? Uh -huh. And, like, the question was, who is the song Crow Calypso performed by? Uh -huh. And what modern song do we hear it in, right? And the people tell me it's going back to the island. But this is Crow Calypso. No, this is bullfrog dress and soldier's clothes. Sound the same music, sorry. Going back to the island, I say, don't worry, my little friend. But this is in Burma Road, isn't it? This is part of Burma Road. Right, so they took this and combined it. Because the one, yeah, right, the one before it on the playlist is Bullfrog Dress and Soldier's Clothes by Dale Bourne Johnson. It's almost like Burma Road is a compilation of those two tracks, right? Anyway, something's wrong with Ronnie but I don't know what was wrong with him. Well, listen to this. Out in the field from dawn till dusk Swimming in the blue hole is a must Oh, that island where I was born First thing I'll do is roll some oh. All right, producer, play the Delborn one dead, dead quick. Play the Delborn Johnson bullfrog dress and soldier's clothes dead, dead quick. So, guys, I know we're all out of time. For right now, Gumbe, I think, is still my favorite. See, but here's what the thing is. Rake and Scrape is performed by Bahamians across the archipelago. You go up to Spanish Wells, they got rake and scrape band. You go to Abaco, they got rake and scrape band. You go to Inagua, they got Avi. Avi got to be making all the rake and scrape music in Inagua. Right? But all over you got rake and scrape. And the question is, does Junker New, can we find it in the same way, saturation across the archipelago that we find rake and scrape entrenched in our experience? Anyway, just like the game show, Bahamian, uh, Bahamian game show, How Bahamian Are You? There is no wrong answer. Most important thing is that you play along. Anyway, this song. You hear that? It's yeah, the same. Fire me. Yeah. <laughs> the lyrics, right? Yeah. Anyway, that's Delborn Johnson, bullfrog dress in soldier's clothes. Now, listen, I was going to chop it up with myself and the audience today, leading into independence, to identify the things that are important to us in arts and, and music and culture. But I think we had one of the most important conversations that we could have. We've got to save the Dundas because the Dundas of who has saved so many right. of us. We're all out of time. Thank you, producer. I got Guardian Radio AM with Cecil Newry up next. It's going to be a rocking day. It's going to definitely, I don't know who phone ringing, who calling me, but I hope it's. Anyway. So, Naughty Johnny, don't be calling me. We oh, got to oh, go. Have a great day, Bob. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Red. No so problem. Much. God bless. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>